G'day guys, Gavin from the Cartoon Company. If you're watching this video and you haven't watched the first one of wiring the actual engine loom, you might want to catch up with that one. This is round two, where I'm going to connect the wiring to the ECU. Engine loom is completed. All the plugs and terminals are on the engine loom. This is a, a 1UZ VVTI setup. For those of you that are paying attention and do know the difference, you can see that it is a 3UZ. If you don't know how, um, you might want to watch a video on, on how to tell the difference. Even though my engine is a 3UZ, I'm setting it up as a 1UZ with the 1UZ throttle body. We're using a Link Thunder. It's going into an RX-7 race car uh, here in New Zealand. I've got my firewall grommet on. Look at that. Oh, isn't that a lovely grommet? Kind of sad when you get excited about grommets. I've got my Thunder set up on the bench. And we're going to poke some wires into those plugs. So let's get into it. Hopefully we can see my hands okay. So I'm going to the shortest wire, and I haven't done too bad. I was aiming for the crank sensor wiring, this one here, to be my shortest. But look, I'm like 25 mil shorter with the EGT wiring. So I'm going to start with the EGT, come out to the D plug. And they're right at the top edge of this D plug, and, and you'll see... See? My D is the crappiest D you can imagine. I'm going to change that, eh? We went with a black plate pen, though. Now it looks like a D. And you'll see here, I've got two can. Two can. It's a bird. I've got the can wiring for the can one and can two. I've got a ground. I've got the thermal couples on the corner. I've got a ground out and a five volt and a 14 volt input. I did have plans of using the five volt and the ground out, but I'm not sure I'm actually going to end up doing that at this point. We're going to pop the, the thermal couples in. We'll make sure there's a ground and that voltage in here. I'll do the wiring for the can outputs later on. So this vehicle's getting an AIM dash, or it's a, it's a link dash, but it's made by AIM. So that's going to be one of the can, and for the second can channel, I'm just going to pop an OBD2 plug onto it. Uh, if, then if they want to put it onto their smartphone or something like that, they can. Makes it nice and easy. Uh, and there's a different communication speed for the OBD2 than there is for the dash, so it's easier just to put it on separate CAN channels. For the thermal couple, really simple. Cut it to length. Strip some insulation off very, very carefully because this is tiny, tiny wire. Crimp some terminals and shove it in the holes. Got the, the wideband wires up here. And when I did it, I copied the factory colors as close as I could. I didn't have a red, but I had a pink, which is pretty close. And I've just got my wideband wiring from Link right here. So it's nice and simple. I, I go red, goes to APE, and I match that to APE on the diagram. Yellow, IPE. I should actually say I'm doing um, number two, so I'm, it's IPE two. And that's that one there. White is the heater. I've left the heater trimmed because that's my uh, correct length for this setup. Gray is for the 12 volt power. Green, MES, 
Black is RE. Two wide band sensors, which is one thing that I really like about the Thunder. Fantastic for the V8 engine. And I'm going to have a heap of outputs and a heap of inputs for this job. So many, I will have plenty spare. But having those wide bands, compared to buying like the likes of an Extreme plus uh, two sets of wide bands, it makes more sense to buy the Thunder. Just popping them in. My black wire for my wide band decided to do a runner out of my little group, and it was the first wire I found. Even though I know that these wires that I'm doing now are for the wideband, I still continuity test every single wire. 100% is the only acceptable result from this job. This isn't a school exam, 50% is not a pass, 100%, gotta be perfect. So I check every wire, including the last one, so I know that everything is in order. Great thing about the wideband too, and I've used factory colors or the, the recommended Bosch color. They match on top, they just, I match with the ones below it. So when you've done one, the second one's going really, really easily. Pink is in number one. Red is in number one, pink is close enough. And that is APE. Got to be a green one here somewhere. Green has got to be number five. One, three, five. Green. M E S. M E S. Main relays, ignition switch, earth heater. We're good. That's cool. Right, moving on to the next plug. My whole building talks. Another thing to note is there is a really good help function, um, both in PC Link. Uh, in the wiring section, which we'll have a bit of a look at that as well. And in the configuration menu, when you're doing the setup, there's also some really good help information in there. Helps people, setting it all up, tells you about what each of the settings in the ECU does. That's really, really helpful. So I'm going to get into now, I think I'm going to start, hmm, should I do the trig wires? Yeah, let's do that cam and crank wire. So one of these is my crankshaft, and one of these is my camshaft. So I'll find that, put them into that ECU. So here we have the crank sensor and the cam sensor wiring. They come up, and these two with the blue on are the cam and crank, the, the positive signals. And you can see down underneath here, I've taken the shield, if we can get right in there taking the shields and I've joined them into the earth side with a little crimp. So this wire, which goes to the shield ground, shield ground, that does the grounds for both of these sensors and the shield. Trig one is the crank sensor, trig two is the cam sensor. So we're referring to Crank and cam. So they go into the A plug. I'm going to do a bit of uh, shrinking first. I shrink these a uh, couple of bits of shrink wrap that go over the, the shield. And I slide these bits up over. And 
Use one little bit of wire that's trying to do a bit of an escape act there. So be really careful not to have any little strays. Most excellent. Shields, earths. Trig one is the crankshaft. Trig two is the camshaft. Doesn't feel quite right. good to me and next I'm going to work along injector one two three and four bring that in there. one two three and four I've already got a size length for one of the injectors I think that's number one and these you can't see it in the fit pictures but there's um, 20 gauge and 22 gauge in here and it's quite easy to feel the difference so I've got those ones will be injectors the other ones will be uh, igniters or the coils and the same with the other side I've got twenty and twenty two gauge two three those ones are injectors So I'm going to continuity test back to the engine. So I do that continuity test thing back to the engine, each connector. Then I know I've got continuity and that the wiring's good and I'll pop into each pin. I'm in number eight injector again. We come over here. And we're all good. Always check all of them, always check all of them, and always check the last one. So that sort of confirms that the rest are correct. So in the A plug, I've got injector one, two, three, and four. So I'm taking number one, number two, number three, and number four, cutting to length. Now, if you get the cam and crank sensors in the wrong spot, you're not going to blow anything up. It's just not going to start. So it's not a massive critical issue. Not starting is bad, but blowing stuff up, letting the smoke out is even worse. So that's not really a concern. If you get the injectors in the wrong place, you will lose some performance. But in most cases, people won't actually notice. It just won't be quite as crisp. So we go number one is into number one cylinder, two, three, and four, and we need to size up for the B plug. And I continue the process with the, the B plug uh, to put cylinders five, six, seven, and eight injectors into place. All the injectors 
are now wired to the ECU. And of course, the ECU is putting out the negative, it's the switch. So there's a power wire, 12 volts, going to the other side, and the earth side comes back to the ECU. Each cylinder wired to its respective injector drive. Now I do exactly the same process, but with the ignition. These coils have got built-in igniters, so there's no need for an external igniter because the igniter is located inside the coil. Got different pinouts, whether it's a small coil or the larger coil. I'm going to continuity test each of the coils, mark them up, crimp them, pop them into the drive. I will be doing some matching up for wasted spark at some point and showing how you group them together. And with a lot of this information, there's a help file in PC Link, which is really great. There's some really helpful wiring information in there. So if you need a little bit more, have a look through the help file. It's continuity test. With all the igniter or the coil connections identified, they again each go into their respective cylinder. So ignition one goes to cylinder one. Ignition two goes to cylinder two. Really, really simple, really straightforward. And the firing order is worked out within the software of the ECU. Probably should pop some pins in. So they're along here, ignition one, two, three, four. This is in the A plug. Ignition one. Ignition two. Three and four. And you want to make sure that they do clip all the way home. And you can generally, once you've done a few, you get a feel for it. And B plug. Five. Six. Seven. And seven didn't go in properly. There it goes. Oh, yep, that was it. And you can just check on the front that they've gone all the way in. Okay, what am I going to do next? 